Before you watch and listen to this video, there will be some objectable topics that will be mentioned. Viewer discretion is demanded. Yes, there will be some offensive and sad things mentioned. So if you are not in the mood to hear these sorts of things, stop watching this video, go to the Shadow Parliament's channel, and watch another video instead. If not, then listen to this truly speechless and depressing video log. This is how it all started. I logged into my YouTube account earlier today and there was a private message for me. I didn't think too much about it as it was from this anonymous user. I still remember what the message said, quote, saw your paranormal photograph videos, check out this website, end quote. Enclosed beneath it was the website. And then at the bottom of the message in all capital letters, quote, sounds credible. That's it. Nothing else. I tried to view the person's channel, but it was closed, so all I had was this link. This is the information that I copied off that website. Red Mist is a controversial real-life bootleg tape featuring an unaired episode of SpongeBob SquarePants. Like the long-lost but recently discovered Suicide Mouse tape, Red Mist was purportedly created by a now-imprisoned Scottish animator for the series who intended to pass the tape off as the season 4 premiere episode and featured the death of Squidward. Red Mist begins with Squidward preparing to practice his clarinet in his room as Spongebob and Patrick play merrily outside. Squidward wraps his mouth around the clarinet and is only able to perform one note before being interrupted by someone knocking on the door. He walks down and opens the door and discovers that a traveling salesman is at his door. The salesman, a giant Scottish fish, asks if he can have a moment of Squidward's time. Squidward tells him that he isn't interested and slams the door in the man's face, walking back to his room. The salesman begins knocking again, and Squidward opens the door angrily. The salesman, looking very upset, tells Squidward that the red mist is coming and proceeds to walk off, confusing Squidward. Squidward walks back to his room and finally begins playing the clarinet. After performing several off-key notes, Spongebob and Patrick begin laughing outside, interrupting Squidward yet again. Squidward walks over to the window and shouts at the two, telling them that he needs to practice for a concert that he will be performing at. Spongebob and Patrick apologize with tears in their eyes and begins to walk back to their houses. Squidward, unsure of himself, walks back over and begins playing his clarinet again, this time uninterrupted. The scene then fades to red over the course of 12 seconds. Perhaps by glitch, the same scene is repeated once more, which is somewhat common in rough cuts of animation. However, this time, the eyes have been replaced with new, more realistic eyes with red pupils. Clearly not real, but more realistic than the CGI or animated. The audio is completely absent from this scene, save for occasional clicks. After a repeat of the previous scene, a new scene begins with the same red eyes, but at the theater where Squidward is playing his clarinet. The frames in the animation skip every four seconds, but the sound remains synthesized. After an unruly performance of a song he dubbed Red Mist, SpongeBob and Patrick are seen in the crowd booing Squidward, very uncommon for them. The scene pans to reveal the same Scottish salesman sitting next to them, also booing as Squidward walks back to his home with his head in his tentacles. What's odd is that the scene actually shows him walking to his house with nothing happening in the background for 3 minutes and 50 seconds before abruptly cutting to red for another 20 seconds, just as he arrives at his house. A new scene appears, back to the original cartoon eyes, with Squidward sitting in a chair in his room that night with a blank look on his face for roughly 30 seconds before starting to sob softly. Again, the audio is completely missing from most of the scene, until the sobbing begins. This is when the sound of a slight breeze through a forest can be heard in the background. It also begins very mildly zooming in on Squidward's face, only noticeable if you compare 10 seconds of frames side by side. The sound of him sobbing softly can suddenly be heard very loudly and severely as the screen twitches in on itself briefly. The salesman's laugh can also be heard echoing in the background. 
After this photograph is seen, it cuts back to Squidward sobbing, much louder than before with what appears to be blood running from his eyes instead of tears and the sound of the salesman still heard. The sound of the wind in the forest is also played at a much louder volume, but now with the sounds of branches snapping and the screams of a young boy heard. After more than 20 seconds, another single frame appears, this time of an 8-year-old girl in the forest laying on her stomach in a pool of blood with her back cut open and entrails piled on top. The shadow of the photographer is also visible. This cuts back to Squidward again, this time staring at the viewer as the sound of the salesman echoes, Do it! And the red mist is coming, repeatedly. After 40 seconds of this, the camera quickly pans out to reveal Squidward holding a realistic gun, looking as though it were photoshopped into the scene. Squidward lifts the barrel into his mouth and fires, with blood shooting out from his head. Squidward is alive, but now suddenly in the forest, with one eye dangling from the side of his face, pop. A hole also appears in the side of his jaw. Standing over him is the Scottish salesman from the beginning of the episode. Captions also appear at the bottom of the screen, repeating everything that is said. Squidward asks the man, What do you want from me? And the salesman tells him, I need about tree fitty. Squidward asks, What does tree fitty mean? And the salesman answers, You know, tree dollars and fitty cents? Squidward shouts, I ain't giving you no tree fitty. Just as the monster reveals a small zipper on the side of his head, after unzipping it, the salesman transforms into the Loch Ness Monster, an eight-story tall crustacean from the Protozoic Era, and asks in response, How about two fitty? Squidward retorts, Oh, so now it's only two fitty? What? Is there a sale on Loch Ness Munchies or something? The Loch Ness Monster swims off angrily, promising to one day return and extract revenge on Squidward. The colors invert themselves and the scene cuts to blue. On November 7, 2004, after the initial animation of the storyboards were completed in Fief, Scotland, the tape was delivered to the lead animators and sound editors at Paramount Studios in Hollywood, California during the middle of the night. The tape was taken into the editing room where it was watched by said animators and editors as well as two 16-year-old interns. The tape which was supposed to feature the rough cut of Fear of a Krabby Patty, instead began with a title card using the name Red Mist. While thrown off at first, the animators continued watching, discovering the tape had been heavily tampered with as some sort of a cruel joke. As a result, three animators, Barry O'Neill, Grant Kirkland Jr., and Elisa Simpson were sent to the hospital. One editor retired, Fernando de la Peña, and one intern, Jackie McMullen, committed suicide. The tape was sent to the police, who determined that it had been made by Andrew Skinner, a disgruntled animator from Thief, Scotland, who had since been charged with nine counts of murder, including the murder of the two children seen in the tape. Oddly enough, after going through the data on the VHS, police discovered that the last edit to the tape had been made exactly 24 seconds before it was watched by the SpongeBob staff. Alright. I have to say, what the fuck? I'm sorry, I don't normally curse in any of my videos, but after reading that, I had to say something. I mean, at the Shadow Parliament, I tried to be as open-minded as possible and when someone gives me links to websites and things like that I do click it because you know um, I have a lot of videos I always encourage my subscribers friends and random viewers to um, let me see messages if you want if you want me to make an episode about something and narrate an episode about it I'll do it I'll chances are that I'll think about it and do it and um, I got this link from some person and they maybe thought that I was into the occult or something like that. I'm not into any of that, but there is mystery behind it. And what and what that is, I don't know what that is. Is this even true? Is this even uh, real? I don't know what this is. This could be some some story made up by someone on the internet. This Chaz Chaz what was it? Uh, Chaz Agnew. Who knows? Maybe he just wrote the story up because he's some weirdo. I don't know who this person is. I don't know. Um, now, I'm going to go with two scenarios. Scenario one, this is fake. 
in the in this now in this information that I just got from the website that this uh, anonymous user sent me says that this person wants to sell the rights to this video online. If this is false, he's not going to do it. All he's going to do is just let this picture of Squidward, which I just showed you when I was narrating, that's all you're going to see. You're not going to see anything else. I mean, you know, scenario number two. This is real. He has a tape of a murder. If he ever shows that to anyone, he's going to be arrested because that's probably some kind of offense. And if this is true, and he wants to make money off this, how can you? Like, I, you know, common sense would be, I don't know, to put it on the internet. I mean, maybe this person wants to make a buck off it. I don't know who that. I don't know who this is. I have to admit, this has been one of the most disturbing things I've read about in a while. It's been a while since I've read something like this, but like I said in the beginning of this video, it's um, view at your own risk. Now, some of you might be thinking, why would you make a video log about this? And my thought was that um, at the idea, at the time, it sounded good. It's mysterious. It's a little crazy, but that's how the world is. The world is a little crazy. The world is, that's how it is. And for me or for you to ignore that, then that's just plain crazy. That's just that's just not right. Um, would I accept information like this again? I would have to really think about it. Because I encourage my viewers to send things to me. And if you want to um, send me something, do it. Because, you know, I'm not going to... And say no more no one sent me anything because this whole experience turned me off no it hasn't um, I'm a man I'm a Asian American and I'm not gonna let something as trivial as some information on the internet get to me so I want to know what people have to say do you think this is a load of bullshit do you think this is all rubbish is this even real what is this I want to know because a part of me right now doesn't want to make this video. I don't want to make this, but I am. Because I'm, my, I'm neutral in thought, and I leave that up to the viewer, you watching, to decide. 